Hello and welcome back to the channel. You join me on episode four of trying to ride the entire world on Ashworth, my Honda monkey bike. Now we are in France. I'm about over halfway through France at the minute and I'm doing the whole world adventure leg by leg. And my aim is to get off for the end of leg one to the Pyrenees where I can store the bike, fly home and fly back again. But today, today I have an unbelievably awesome plan ish and i need to get ready get on the bike get sorted do my checks and get on the road so cue the intro this adventure is supported by Ashworth Automotive in Western Supermare, the number one garage keeping you and Helmethead on the road. Well, with Ashworth uncovered, I thought it's time to tell you what my plan is for today, because of course, with my excellent planning skills, like Phileas Fogg, I always know what I'm doing. But actually today, generally, I really do know what I'm doing, because I've stayed here at the Ace Hotel, that is like staying in, a, in, in, in England in a very cheap travel lodge. <laughs> I mean, it's okay, there's a bed, um, but I've woken up with a bit of a sore throat from the air conditioning and all that stuff, it's just... It, it, it's, it's not fit for a lord. Um, I wouldn't recommend staying here. It's right next to the motorway, so there is handiness to it. But anyway, my plan today is, is I've picked somewhere, I can't remember what I've picked exactly, but I've picked somewhere fit for a lord, somewhere I actually think for us is worth riding to go and see, and it should get us off the motorway eventually and into a very pretty part of France. And I generally cannot remember exactly where it was. I basically did what I always do. I put a pin in Google map in a big green area, looked for something that looked posh, and then I booked myself a room there. And that's really all I've done. But I think it's about f over 300 odd kilometres away because that gets me past my goal for I've got in my head today. I wanted to get basically to um, what's the white wine place called? Ah, uh, Bordeaux. Bordeaux. I wanted to get myself past Bordeaux or just past Bordeaux and get booked in there and obviously get a very nice bottle of wine and I do still want to get a bottle of wine if that's possible but I want to go further and I want to beat that goal because I seem to be able at the moment since yesterday beating massive goals well probably just because I'm just hammering it down motorways every day but anyway <laughs> let's do a few checks on Ashworth and let's get on the road and let's I'll show you on the map as well exactly where I, I think I've booked and how far away it is Anyway, let's just do a few checks. So just there is the oil site, and as you can see, she is good on oil. That's level, and she is just on max. She's not lost a drop in miles and miles. I am generally impressed because I used to put half a litre in, as everybody knows, especially when I did the uh, UK trip, and I clearly burnt the piston rings out, and oil was being pushed up and stuff, and obviously it's been fixed by Ashworth Automotive that support me on this adventure but generally if I'd done the sort of miles I've done on this even from you I'd end up topping the oil up a little bit because they do they do use a little bit of oil they're a two stroke especially when I'm riding and running it down motorways for hours and hours it's not it's not used a drop the man's a wizard anyway let's check the chain so the chain itself I've been spraying it every day and to be fair I think that looks well gunked up still so I'm not going to put another layer of monkey slip on it but not on a fragrance so it smells gorgeous I'm just gonna leave it and it's a heavy duty chain under here so it is starting to slacken but I reckon I reckon I'll get another ride out of this and hopefully not need to yeah probably adjust that on the next one because every time I adjust it obviously I stretch it a little bit more after so many days that's my theory so yeah, that, that is that is well waxed up. Definitely well waxed up. Then of course, always do your visual check. Everything looks good. The exhaust is still on. There is no sign of leakage whatsoever at all. Nothing. And again, he's rebuilt this engine, so it's running spot on. Tire pressure, always check your tire pressure. It's so important. 11 out of 10 check. Yeah, that's good. Same with the rear. 
it's good nothing's loose well, there's nothing to be loose my air filter's still on i did that by the way well impressed everything first aid kit with pants in still attached let's go on the road right so today to the place i'm staying that is not the ace hotel thank goodness it says it's three star in there <laughs> no 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 that is one and a quarter star um right it's 357 kilometers so it's a fair old chunk but like i said i'll be well ahead of my goal my goal was to get somewhere around bordeaux because then the last leg is obviously to the pyrenees it's around i don't know three quarters of a day ride on this but i'm going well past it so it should be about half a day ride um to my end destination where i can store the bike means i might be able to get a bit of riding around there tomorrow that's what i'm hoping i'd like to ham this down at least get one easy day but we'll see because i'm trying to do a whole length of a country on a 125 of course so anyway um let's let's look so border down here now this is what i said about the green area this is like all forestry when i had a look at the google on pictures and um it looks stunning so i'm thinking come down here right on the edge potentially i could cut across if I get time but we'll see anyway so we are going past Bordeaux further down and then at that point we're like well well over three quarters of the way aren't we if not whatever the next one is on top of that anyway right I'm going to put on some awesome tunage and I'm going to start hacking down some miles I've got a full tank I filled up yesterday so music miles let's do this <laughs> Well, I've just literally smashed out 100 kilometers. I still don't know what the difference is in miles. I wouldn't dare figure it all out. But I've just done 100 kilometers, and that's basically the tank of fuel at top revs all the way down the motorway. But I am determined to get to the nice area. So get all the motorway stuff done, get all these kilometers done, just keep hacking till the tank's almost empty, fill it up, and do another leg. As soon as I get there, I can get us off of all these motorways and get us to some fantastic scenery. At least that's my plan. My vision is this amazing forestry that we're going to ride. And I just need to get us there. But I need to say a massive thank you to Tony Beasley. Because Tony Beasley has sent me £50 via the PayPal link to help keep me on the road. And I'm massively, you know, massively... Uh, thankful for that because I don't ask and people keep helping me and that guy's what a legend that's basically two days worth of fuel and a grand beer each night for that bike well for, for the by, bike the bike gets the fuel I get the grand beer but massive thank you Tony I massively appreciate it you're an absolute legend and obviously what I love about it is, is obviously you get in how much hard work and time's going into it and I just I just I appreciate it. I am humbled by it to be honest when I look to my phone there's lots of notifications and I'm missing so many comments and people saying stuff but at the end of the day when i saw that pop up and i was like oh paypal thinking it's something to come out because obviously you have to pay for the music the li licenses and all that stuff that i do um when i saw that i was just like do you know what that's really special so thanks i do appreciate it. i'm not going to keep gushing but thank you so much dude two days worth of fuel in that bike you're a legend anyway i reckon i can do another 100 kilometers before i have to get off again i'm not gonna mind but <laughs> it's really numb you get to a point about i don't know i'd say at the 80 kilometer mark you are fidgeting like mad in the sea the last 20 is like oh but i've got to get there i've got to get you some footage i want to get something pretty today i want to get something amazing so let's do another 100 kilometers well we're just leaving the services and i had when i walked back to my bike i went for a quick wee and uh, a coffee what was really weird because a men's toilet some women came in so i think they must have been foreign and got confused or, or I'm the foreign one who was weird in the wrong toilet um, but either way I came back and there was two cool French dudes looking at my bike and uh, one turns around and obviously says to me oh you know what is it the bike it's really cool and uh, I was saying oh it's a Honda monkey bike and I'm going to ride the entire world on it or try and get around the world by doing the entire world and it was like really on a 125 it was really cool then he, then he just pointed at the camera and goes oh he goes you filming I was like yeah I've uh, got a YouTube channel I film vlogs in my very good French this is all happening and he goes ah oh, oh, he goes can I take a picture so I stood by the bike and took a picture it was really really cool and he messaged his friend um, 
and within a few seconds he's just going to me oh he goes he was telling me about how he had a vespa and he did some trips and he goes ah i sent this i sent picture to my friend and he knows who you are i was like yay friend someone in france knows who i am that's nice <laughs> no it was cool and then um yeah, it's cool especially when somebody's in the back going that's helmet head it's like yeah that's me fella i love it i absolutely love it Ah, oh, I love. I mean, Ashworth does. She it gets attention. There's, there's no other like monkey pie that looks like this. There's just it is something very unique and very special. But it's lovely to chat to people about the bike. Right, 100 kilometres or probably until the fuel light gets down to two bars and I come to a petrol station is my aim. And then after that, if I can get even a little bit further, that will be one more. 224 kilometers left that might be one more fuel stop after that potentially or maybe another no one two yeah and then one more fuel stop after that and that should give me hopefully enough fuel to do a little bit of searching out this area what well, my vision is going to be the most epic scenes of you know vast forests and trails and the bike in epicness but we'll see what we get from the pin in google maps <laughs> right Saddle down, I'm going to listen to some tunes, do a bit of boogie in, and let's just bang down this 100 miles. See you in a second. Well, I've covered, I think, nearly 100 kilometres again, and I'm kind of getting to the point where it's like I'm yawning, and <laughs> I've got tears running down from my face, because you can probably see the weather has changed to for what for me is almost like a light summer's day in England and I'm because I'm doing so many miles in one position I've kind of at the moment I'll, I'll show you the position in a second but I'm getting a position on the bike where I'm like trying to move every once in a while to take the pressure points off my butt because I'm getting the number um but I'm kind of point where I'm really relaxing because I'm warm because obviously I've dressed for sort of winterish cold riding and I know the temperature drops really loads at night and, and especially on the south side of France but obviously the south where we get the warmer it's getting so I've, I've not got any heated gear on any of that sort of completely the opposite I am just sunbathing literally as I'm riding along it's obviously it's so warm it's lovely let me go for a few developments um with what I've noticed when getting off of the bike because there's a little couple of little things that are quite interesting and I'll show you these areas because again in the UK in England when we stop in a lay-by it is literally the about a length and a half car width um so trucks can fit in it next to a road but in France they've got it right because what I've noticed is, is that this is quite a busy place it's got a lot of people sitting down and eating lunch and stuff on picnic benches I'll give you a quick look around and I'll park right at the back on purpose to do a bit to camera but I'll give you a look around and I'll talk to you about the bike so this is like a French stop rest area um, and just it's like a little bit of a wooded area now these are all over France this isn't just here literally all over France and they actually have a toilet that's got like a self-cleaning toilet thing they're not the best don't get me wrong but they do the job you want them to do but there's families sat over there on a bench having picnic and over there having a picnic a couple and I you know what a way to do it come off of the motorway and come into a place like this and just relax and chill and you're far enough away there's you can hear the road noise but far enough away right the monkey bike i think because it's got warmer i'm using a little less fuel and obviously or this is the other side i'm going a lot more downhill because i'm holding about 100 kilometers an hour and over the last couple of days really most of the time i'm doing between 80 and 90 but 100 and if i get behind a truck doing about 95 ish i can rise i can ride on half throttle obviously it's using less fuel but i'll be honest i do that for about 15 minutes and then i get bored and i just throttle it and overtake and at some points i've been even sitting at about 105 that's quite nice not miles per hour sorry kilometers per hour so it seems to be using a lot less fuel but what i have noticed when i've pulled over is is i obviously use the fuel can for the first time ever and there was a look you can see 
some fuel coming out of it i could have overfilled it and it could have just been because it's getting warm it's obviously seeping out a bit so i've taken it off there was no pressure or any of that but i've taken it off and put the fuel cap back on to make sure i've done it properly etc etc it's still full of fuel so maybe i've probably gone a little bit too far what i think i did in the uk as well because that's supposed to be three liters and i can get more than three liters in it so next time i fill it up i'm going to put a little bit less in it so it's got more room to breathe um the bike though ashworth i mean look at it it just it is just isn't it it's just the bike that you can't stop but stare at and go that's absolutely amazing i mean i know everyone's waiting for the bmw i think it's a gs 1300 or is it the 1400 whatever the new gs is um i'm too chilled out and relaxed and i'll <laughs> tell you about my position in a minute um but whatever the next b8 beamer is and to be fair if i had the money i would be looking at that for doing trips and stuff but reality look at it ashworth a 125 that's almost covered an entire country not just that half of the uk pretty much and then almost the whole length of france and it's just pooling along thumping away on that engine in true style in its awesomeness all thanks to ashworth automotive that is what gs should be building their new model on because i think everyone would be more happy with something like this it's just really cool all right positioning so what i'm doing is is i am kind of because i'm having to move back and forwards on the seat and there's not a lot of room to be fair but if i go forwards a little bit i can kind of lean back and rest myself here now i was sent a link from a guy called wookie in regards to some things i can stick on here to make it more comfortable almost like a pillow base and i did turn around and say what i might do is put a bungee cord around and put a pillow on it and I'm like, do you know what? I wish I'd done it because it's good. I'm comfortable, to be fair. Just lean because I've got that, that many layers on. I'm really comfortable. But I don't know. I might do what he said and buy the actual proper stick on things or, or speak to someone and let, hopefully they'll send me them <laughs> because if I stick them on, that is like a cushion area to rest my back on. So it's comfortable is what I'm trying to say, um, really. Um, yeah, but the heat and me... I feel like I'm falling asleep as I'm riding almost. So that being said, what I have done is fought this through like a true adventurer that I am. And I do have one more protein version of a bounty bar and it is branded as a bounty bar. And I did buy it in a Tesco's in the UK, but it's a protein version and it tastes crap. If I'm honest with you, don't buy it. It tastes crap, but it is got, it says on it, fruit and nut and it's healthy as it's got protein on the packet. And I have still got some water left, so I'm going to, have 10 minutes sip some water enjoy a bounty bar and then i'm gonna get back on the road i've got it says four bars of fuel left but that will drop to three soon and i always get to two and have to start looking so potentially the next services i come across i'll fill up again i don't think we're hugely far away from bordeaux now about 50 kilometers away um, and I'd love to find somewhere to get some wine when we get there, but I do not want to go too far off route if that's happened because I'm desperate to get us to the bit I think that's going to be epic. Anyway, water, protein bounty bar, back on the road. <laughs> just given lee a quick call from ashworth automotive just to tell him how awesome the bike is basically and let him know that it's not used a drop of oil in days and uh basically and also to tell him that he's got the biggest oh he basically gives the best strongest man hugs i've ever received in my entire life and uh he basically did the fuel can up using i don't know muscle right basically using the power of gray skull and i've had to get obviously paul to, to summon the power of grace grace gold a couple of days ago to undo the fuel can but i've done it back up to what i like to call a lord's strength what's well, basically like washing up with fairy liquid and getting soft hand strength but i am it's sun it's like a hot sunny day in england right now that i'm just standing there sweating so i am gonna lose the gerbin heated vest put that in a pannier and cool down hopefully i won't get as tired then because obviously I'm, I'm probably overheating and sunbathing as i'm riding so this away back on the road proper miles bag right here it's full of my pants just shove it in it'll be fine it'll be fine so another big tip what people turn around and say oh you're wearing a thermal top 
don't wear a cotton t-shirt because believe it or not it's not breathable if you wear like these are like thermal tops and basically it's like a it's what push it's what push bike riders like you know cyclists you know le the leotard riders wear and they wear it for a reason not saying that they're wise because they're on a push bike and not a motorbike because it lets out the sort of sweat so when you're hot it will let out the sweat but it will keep you layered and obviously when you're hot it let it lets breathable so it will also let out your your, your sweat that means that you stay warmer because when you sweat your body's trying to cool you down if that makes sense so if you don't if you don't let your sweat come out when you're cold you get wet and you get colder where with this it pushes the sweat out just trust me i'm a lord i know what i'm talking about right now i've taken that off i've got oh, I've got, I've got room i've got used to being sort of jacket with a jacket over it oh, really i should have took my waterproof trousers off would have helped me keep cooler but i think when i get going i'll be all right if not i'll pull over again right i've got 124 kilometers to go that's to the hotel i've booked but like I said, it's the edge of this green space. So I'm going to do another chunk. Then I'm probably going to pick a waypoint in the green space and do that. But same, we're going to arrive now at four. Four? No. That's that's hundred. No. Is that right? Anyway, we've got. Well, that will drop down a bar, I think, in a minute. We've got nip, probably about half a tank in reality. What's well, amazing? Amazing. Um, but. With, even with that, I'll see it drop quite quickly the second half. So I've got a feeling we'll be filling up potentially in the next, I don't know, 40 kilometres. We'll see. That'll be good because I'll be under 100 then. We, we will see. Anyway, back on the motorway. Let's get around Bordeaux. Um, and if there's anywhere I can see to pick up wine, I'm buying wine. I love red wine. If anyone's interested in uh, sending me a bottle of amazing wine like Wookie did a while ago, I would not say no. I'm very, very happy to receive cases of wine that are, uh, are really good because I'm not going to pretend I'm a wine connoisseur at all. I do do what everyone else does in the world. I go out and look for a bottle and give it a go. But... Uh, yeah, well, the one that Wookie sent me was absolutely incredible. You go back and check that out. And you're in a video where I'm talking about, before I set off on the trip, what a legend that man was. Anyway, back on the motorway. All I can do now, clock down these miles. It says we're off in 27 kilometres. And I've literally just dropped down to three bars of fuel, like I said I would as well. So next fuel station will probably be a top-up. Anyway, let's go. Well, there is a load of traffic on the motorway I'm, I'm, I was on and we literally just got someone that said welcome to Bordeaux and of course I would have carried on the motorway and gone past it but it took me off on a fast route on Google and we're going through where all the vineyards are I mean, I keep going past a little sign saying to me like uh, Merlot da 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 and uh, something something da 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 um, but they're like the sign for the vineyards. Like here is another vineyard itself. And there's a sign for it, but I didn't see anything like a shop. And I'd love if I can find one more has a shop. Because that would be seriously next level. Because I want to buy and taste, especially tonight. Imagine sitting having a beautiful bottle from a vineyard that you actually picked it up from. Now I've been told that they are all over the region, hence obviously why it's so famous for its wine. Um, but I don't know if they sell them privately. I'm hoping that they are. I'm sure I will find a shop. I'm sure it's going to happen. But I'm glad to be off the motorway. There's something about long haul riding that is, you know you've got to do it to get these miles down, to get to the destination. Because I have got a time scale I have to get. I have to get to France tomorrow. Or at the very latest, the next day but early in the morning. Because of course I've got to store the bike. And I've got to prep the bike to be stored. I'm not putting it away dirty after getting five or six days of road road on it, I want to get it ready so when I come back, I can jump on it and do the next leg of this world, world adventure and she's ready to go. So I need a good few hours cleaning it, sorting a few bits out. Now this looks like I've just entered an industrial estate. I've just gone through beautiful vineyards and I've switched the camera on. I get to show you one. 
and now we're on to industrial estates brilliant <laughs> brilliant but most of all we're going to see where this is going to lead us because hopefully we'll avoid a big chunk of the motorway now i've got 114 kilometers to go until i reach the place i'm staying it's saying now we're going to be arriving at you can add on longer so let's just add on another 20 odd minutes so it's going to say we're going to be arriving at 4 p.m in the afternoon and i want to get there I like I keep saying with time to add some epic filming and I'm sure I will I'd like to get the you know I'd like to get some epic filming in basically the drone out the lot but we'll see how it pans out whole country Alan a whole country you can't just stop every two seconds straight on oh is there any just to say anything just like it's got big wine wine people on it and wanting to give me a few bottles to a lord what's that oh that's a warehouse i wonder if here because they're in wine country even the petrol stations flow with wine you just pick it up like you do a car and just fill up your barrel not there obviously because it's extremely small and it looks shut and it looks like card only uh, card only for wine could be good Right, anything exciting happens that's not in the industrial estate, I will let you know. If not, I'm going to continue. Before you die of boredom of looking at, well, I think that's a chicken factory or distribution place. We'll find out. I just told me signs for Iraq. We're not there yet, are we? Anyway, let's go. Look, vineyards. More beautiful vineyards. They look like they've got no grapes on, though. Ah, uh, maybe that's why there's no, I don't know, I don't know, the beautiful vineyards people, I just want to show you more vineyards, I could just take, if I had the time, I'd love to take, take the day off the bike, and spend, oh, half a day on the bike, but spend an afternoon in a vineyard, just tasting wine and pretending that I know what they're talking about boy getting completely sloshed on a wine tour oh these grapes have been in their beautiful orange sun for like two hours and they are popped ready for you to drink monsieur and I just go away 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 oh, and I, woo, I'm a bit drunk now well I've just <laughs> well I've just smashed out another I don't know hundred plus kilometers and uh, I'm yawning again on, on the bike and I'm just might go if you see any water in down, but it is generally tears of, from yawning. Um, sip some of this water, I'm really dehydrated. I think that's partly the problem. Um, but anyway, so Bordeaux, let's talk about Bordeaux first. So I wanted, I, you saw I rode past some amazing vineyards and it was vineyard after vineyard after vineyard. And I was like going, there's got to be a shop somewhere. It's got to be a shop. And I went for a little, beautiful little town. But what they seemed to have there was a pharmacy and a few old sort of closed looking shops. And I kind of thought, maybe this is just me, but I would have thought that there would have been a sh like a wine shop selling all those vineyards wines in one place. Like a little one for the local people to go and pick up their bottle of wine, to go and sit out and enjoy their cheese at night. And they'd be quite busy. And I had this vision of this old man being there, this sort of big fat old sort of French man just selling off his wine. But there wasn't any. There was literally nowhere to buy wine. I was like, it's Bordeaux. It's famous for wine. Why aren't you selling wine everywhere? Now, it might well be because I did come off the motorway and I was off the beaten track. That they just That's lots of little wine producers making you know lots of little beautiful bottles of wine that are sold somewhere in Bordeaux in the restaurants and I guess it and stuff like that but I think they're missing a business opportunity because I think if, like, if it was England we'd have a wine shop on every corner and you'd sell all these bottles of wines and everybody would just be buying bottles of wine all the time and we'd all be sloshed because it's wine country and unless they all got that sloshed that they don't come out of the houses and they no longer produce wine and all those vineyards I went by the reason why there's no grapes isn't because it's out of season it's because they've drunk all the wine and they're just drunk all the time who knows who knows at all but we have smashed down majority of the miles we are less than 39 kilometers I believe away from where I'm staying well hopefully will be nice 
but I'm gonna use Google Maps now to see if I can pick somewhere in that green area that I wanted and hopefully get some cinematic footage because I've when I got that like the motorway in, in Bordeaux and went round it was beautiful and it was stunning and then I got back on the motorway and sat on it for hours and I need I need excitement I need some cool country roads or some prettiness but I pulled over in one of these beautiful green space areas again anyway let's look at the map let's pick somewhere and let's let's get some what I like to call the money shots so what I've done is the hotel I've booked is around down here somewhere and this is like the 39 kilometers or whatever it is down there and what I've decided to do is put myself probably completely at in well loads of time on but I've rooted myself kind of not into the middle but sort of to a section of this green route because there looks like there's a little country-ish road that's going to go all the way down here and my plan is to follow it all the way back down to the end of the green route and then go to my hotel so it's 55 kilometers that says 50 minutes but about just over an hour away and if we start the journey it says i arrive there at 4 20 but probably about five o'clock so it should still be time with the light to get something as i ride across all the green stuff that's the plan well i've pulled away from the parking place and literally a few miles down the road on the motorway or the highway whatever they call it in france it has taken us off and that feeling because as soon as i got back on the bike my bum was numb it was generally numb but that feeling of getting off is just look it's just it's nice to see some beauty i'm, I'm hammering so many miles um, and i need to i have to but just I love I don't know why I love the country and it's France is France like the pictures that you that you put in your head of a country and I'm sure the French do it for us in England is this like these little houses miles apart that are very French looking and been there for many years and solid stone and roads like this where wow this is a bend a bend I've been on that way for ages look whoa, already I love it. I absolutely love it. And this just looks fast. I don't need to brake. Slow down. Speed up, Alan. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is what it's about. But this is what I have to do. I have to hammer down the miles because I have to get through France. I have to cover a whole country. But this is what it's about. Oh, this was worth just sitting there all day hammering miles for. Even if it's just this is all I get. Oh, 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 oh. this is lovely. Oh, we're coming into our first French little village. Ah, hello, my French friends. Beautiful. I wonder if they sell wine anywhere around here. Oh, look, goats. Goats, like I've never seen a goat before. It's a French goat, though, so it's different. Take my helmet, visor, friend. Let's get some air flowing. Taking the. Do you know what it smells of? <laughs> it was really funny. It smells of coal burning. It smells like. Like, like barbecue oh that's nice oh, I'm hungry I'm really hungry I am really hungry I'm doing my absolute best to keep costs down I'm doing my absolute best I'm trying not to buy stuff out of service stations I'm trying to have a breakfast in the hotel like I do or as a croissant and cheese and then a half decent meal tonight and that's all I want because that's that's my way of saving money and I'm so focused on on the adventure oh, that's ripped my mouth wore in look at these beautiful houses anyway I'm sure it's just gonna get more and more beauty but we've not got to what I hope is the money road the money shot the thing that I've traveled all this distance today this this is just the beginning and the excitement's like you can feel it you can hear it and I'm sure you can feel it with me I can smell coal but I want, oh, I want sausage on a barbecue, a nice big sausage. Oh, I need it. Oh, who's having a barbecue? There's no one around. Mm. Anyway, I, want, uh, I can see why my dad's moved here. I mean, this is perfect, a house with nobody around. I get it. I get it. Well, I just had to pull over for a second to get a photo that I'm going to put up on Instagram and the Facebook page. But there's something about that sun. It was literally where I put it on the road was just behind the trees and the bike. And I was like, oh, that's an epic shot. You know, when you kind of go like, I just got to stop, take a picture. That's what I had to do. Right. We're still not in the big green zone. I just checked on the map and we're actually 
like I don't know how far away not far but this is just the beginning so I reckon my little Google map thing is going to work well but I had to stop for a picture right stop talking start riding let's get ourselves to this I can't keep stopping every time I see something free I'm stopping alright this is Overlander so going to bumps and off road and things is no problem for it at all and we're up and out let's go well this is the road this is the d355 and down there a little way is a place called jambon and because i know so much it's on the sat nav and i put a waypoint to get here but i've gone on straight roads all the way here pretty much all forestry and i've pulled off onto this thinking it might be like a little bendy track but it's another completely virtually straight road a slight bend and another straight by the looks of it but what a place and what a road so shall we together ride this beautiful beautiful french road this is what i've come all this way for i'm falling in love with france all over again ride with me let's do this I'm sure you can agree it was worth going off route and just finding that perfect road because I am massively in my element as we speak but we've come to the end of that road and one of the things I did when I got to end that road was put in a petrol station because at that point I was at two bars that's my time to find a petrol station so I went a few miles to a petrol station in a village that was closed <laughs> I was like don't be closed and I found another one that said 24 hour and it was only literally I think two and a half miles whatever it was away so I then headed off to that it turns out that's on the motorway and you've got to literally go back on yourself 
on a toll road and all that stuff so it makes no sense so I've got there and now I've got one bar of fuel left but I'm not bothered like I said because I've still got my backup can of juice so it doesn't really matter so thinking I'm not paying for a toll right now what I've decided to do is put finally put in my hotel in the sat nav see how far away it was and look as you can see it's 23 minutes 27 kilometers away and it means I'll arrive there for about six o'clock was just a perfect time for me to get there and chill out the sun will be going down and hopefully on the way I'll find a petrol station if not I will use my emergency can that virtually fills up the tank anyway and I'll just fill up both tomorrow so everything's good everything is really 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 good and I just I love being on the road and I just love I love creating this content and doing that little bit back there I don't know it's just something really really cool and this bike Ashworth is really special really special well I have made it to my hotel where I'm staying and my fuel light is flashing away for absolutely ages so tomorrow I'm gonna have to pull down the road and tip some fuel into it I won't do it here because it is quite a posh hotel because I basically got somewhere fit for a lord I will show you my hotel room I will show you where I am on the map in just a second I am proper knackered now it's 20 past six the sun was just going down but it's been a beautiful day and it's so warm I have to take a bit of a stroll across there's like a whole like river thing behind me or a, whatever it's a water thing and it's a casino and there's also a restaurant and all sorts of stuff and I'm looking forward just to going and getting that beer of course Tony Beaver sent me the money for my fuel today and a beer so what a legend anyway let me just show you the hotel as such but the hotel room I'll show you where I am on the map give you a little bit of a tour but more fit for a lord I believe Now, I'm pretty sure you'll agree, this is more lordly. It feels more lordly, it's better. There's even a security gate for it to be closed. The lady, I don't know if she owns a place or works here, I'm guessing she owns a place. She moved her lovely Merc over so I could put mine where they park, literally right next to reception, but it's all security camera gate the lot. She clearly knew I was a lord, because as soon as I arrived, she was like, no problem, sir, you want to leave a motorcycle there? Or would you like it to be parked over here? So we moved it. And, but what? If it, is it just me or like posh places have like this mood lighting this look it's purple and it's kind of like oh on the ceiling what's what's nice the bed is a proper proper king size bed mm, that doubles pushed together proper king size bed can't wait because I've rubbish sleep last night just lovely and of course look let me just show you the bathroom just nice and modern just good and of course the most sexiest lord in the world so i'm staying just here in the hotel deluxe um and then like i said there's like a water thing behind me here it is there's a water thing here the restaurant is over here so i need to take a little stroll to get to that um and that's what is that it's just like a reservoir style thing and there's all people walking around it's got like a sandy beach and all sorts of stuff but that is my location but look at the distances again we've done today i mean it's massive isn't it it's just huge we've come from somewhere up here up here wasn't it and then we've come down and we've done Bordeaux that apparently you can't buy a bottle of wine unless you go into the center and then all the way down here oh some miles so i definitely think the hotel de pack de pack de look the hotel de look um was worth booking i think i need a, a, a night i thought i had a, a restaurant on on site i'm a little bit good i generally have to walk and it's not far, but I think you've got to walk round to get to it. But the only thing I will say, the only thing, only one hotel I've stayed in has coffee. As you know, the little coffee little coffee things, if you look at all the rest of them, none of them had it included in this one. That annoys me because I'd actually quite like a cup of coffee now. And the restaurant on site that apparently does a fantastic breakfast, well, French breakfast is croissants, um, that is 
that's all that they do. They don't. They're not restaurants. So obviously, I have to go for a restaurant, but it suits me better. And of course, like I said, it's getting darker. Otherwise, I would take you with me as I go to the bar and chill out tonight. But to be frank, it's no point on filming, and, it, and it's dark. You won't see much, and the noise and the music. And I'm going to go and chill. Is what I'm going to go and do. But today's been. I've enjoyed today. We, we got those, those miles down. I'm still disappointed I couldn't get a bottle of wine where I wanted to, but it's not the end of the world. And um, I'm glad that we kind of cut off the beaten track because let alone it was woody. That's the, the, where I went was just beautiful and woody, but it was just all straight roads. It was weird, like a bend and another straight road. But there's just something special about it because it got that sort of, I don't know, that French vibe to it. And I just, I really kind of, I just put a massive smile on my face today to, to go and do it. And then, of course, tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be the final ride to where we're going to be riding to where my dad lives in the Pyrenees, where the bike's going to be stored. But that literally is then we've ridden the entire length of France. Um, and then, of course, I need to fly back because I need to enter money to come out and then fly the next leg that goes across Spain. But... Um, I don't know, I'm really excited to see my dad. Obviously, I'm looking forward to, if you didn't watch any of the previous videos, I'm bringing him a watch that's been made and, and, and done by the Guild um, in London. And I am also taking him some brandy in a hip flask that he gave me, that he had for many years. I remember it as a kid. And he gave me it when he left to move to France. And I brought brandy in it back um, to share a brandy with him. So I'm really excited to see him and I can't wait. But I also feel like I've just got going. Um, but let alone it, for most people, this is just going to continue in regards to the channel. I know I've got to leave the bike and have a bit of a wait. Um, and I just, I want longer. I just want to keep going, but I, I can't afford to. I need to fly home. I need to work. And I know what my, my, I've got everything planned in my head every X amount of weeks. I come back out, I do the next leg, I fly home, do the same thing, spend some time with my family. But I just feel right now that I need another week on the road. I don't know. I just, I don't want it to end. But what I'm going to do now is go and get that beer, that victory beer, and I'm going to go and chill. So I will see you tomorrow. And it's going to be a weird episode because I'm excited, but I'm also sad. It's weird. But we made it a long, long way, and Ashworth is being brilliant. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow or in the next episode as such. You take care. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>